Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode where we're going to look at StarNet++, the application that uses AI to remove the stars from your astrophotography. And the best part about it is it is free. So go from meh, pretty good photo to wow with this easy one extra step in your imaging process template. StarNet++ is easy to use and it allows you to remove the stars from your astro images, which allows you to adjust the nebulosity or galaxy in the background while not blowing out your stars in the foreground. And I will show you how you then recombine those two images to get an even greater image that really pops. And if you are a Pixinsight user, near the end of the video, I'll show you how you can integrate this tool into Pixinsight and allow you to do a lot of these steps without ever having to actually leave Pixinsight. Although there are other star mass tools in Pixinsight, this one has got to be one of the easiest press of button and you're done tools. So let's get into it. Okay, so once you've actually installed StarNet, it'll show up in this folder here. And basically what you want to do is take a 16-bit version of your stacked and stretched image which here we have is the Iris Nebula, and it's in 16-bit TIFF file. And basically we just drag it and drop it on RGB. This is not a mono image. If you had mono images, like individual RGB, you could do it that way, which probably more correct. But we'll drop it in here, and then we'll just wait, and it'll run through a process, and it'll kick out a copy. If it does nothing, that means that your file is in the wrong format. Now, depending on how long this takes, it will sort of compile here and it will show you how it's doing. Now, I'm just going to speed through this because it will take a bit of time. This is a relatively large image and you do need a bit of a beefy computer to get this done quickly. Okay, so now we have this star list image and we can see here all the stars have been removed. Now, this isn't much better than our current image, but we're going to change the title because it will write over this image and create a new starless.tiff. So we're going to call it, there we go. And we're going to take this into Photoshop. And as we can see here, we have basically the star image here and the starless image here. And what we can do is go here and do curve adjustments and increase that background nebulosity quite a bit actually, but let's not go too crazy here. Potentially just remove some of that. We don't want to blow it out for this example. And you can see there's a lot of nebulosity in here that if we did that same curve adjustment, if I moved it up here to the stars, you can get some of it in there, but it starts blowing out all your stars. So we're going to go like this. And then we take this guy here. And what we do is down here to difference. And that gives us basically a star mass. So the inverse of what the starless should do. We take these two and we merge them. So this is our star list. Now you might notice that there's a little bit of brightness here in the middle of the nebulosity. Um, that's okay. And what we want to do here on this adjustment is we're going to go to contrast saturation. And here we can boost the saturation of the stars. Not too much because then they get like a little weird, but a little bit. To give our stars a little bit of extra color without again affecting the background nebulosity. Merge these layers here and then set them to lighten or screen. Depending on what image you want, one or the other generally works. And we're gonna go with screen on this one. And we're just going to adjust the background a little bit. And there we go. We've added a whole pile of extra nebulosity in there without causing the stars to, to get much brighter. And that is sort of how we can do it with a very easy star mask. Um, without having to get too complicated. And while I am doing this in Photoshop, this can be done in literally any sort of photo editing program like Lightroom or GIMP or whatnot. Um, it's just simply, I have Photoshop, so that's what I'm using. We're not doing any real Photoshopping skills here. This is all just curve adjustments, which most programs have. So 
let's have a look at what the final images look like. So this is the original photo that we stacked and processed. And as you can see here, this is now the new final where the stars are a lot less brighter, but the nebulosity has been pulled out significantly more. So if you happen to have PixInsight, you can do the same process within PixInsight. Um, you just have to install StarNet. It's beta, but it does seem to work. Now, one thing to note you should do is take the original image and you should definitely duplicate it. And the reason for it is because in StarNet, you have the option of doing different strides and going from 128 to 64, it takes four times as long. Going from 64 to 32 it takes four times longer. So you want to be careful how much of a power. So you do want to be careful what stride level you do pick. It gets more accurate the smaller the stride, but the amount of time it takes the process can be a little crazy. And PixInsight does freeze up while it's running. So I'm going to pick this and run it on this one to the right, which is going to get me a starless image. And as you can see, it's totally frozen right now. So we're just going to wait for that to sort of process. It doesn't show you an update like it does in the standalone app. It would be nice if that was something um, that they put in to give you an idea how long it's processing. Because obviously, if you do more than this ride 128, you could be sitting there for a while thinking, is it running or is it frozen? And one of the nice things about PixInsight is that we can go like this, and this will create the inverse image. And here we have the two images, the star mask image and the starless image. And from here, we can go and do all the normal processing that you can do, and then combine them back together with uh, PixInMath. So here are a bunch of other images I have done with StarNet, and I'll just show you sort of what are the kind of improvements that you can expect. If you enjoyed this video, please consider a like and subscribe. Now, enjoy the show.